With the college basketball season right around the corner, we look at where the Buckeye basketball team falls in the preseason AP poll, what we know about this year's Buckeye basketball team, and the possibility of college game day coming to Columbus. All that and more in today's episode of Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes, part of Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. It is Tuesday, October 19th in the year 2021. And I want to thank every person out there that is making this podcast the first listen of every single day. We're in the midst and in the middle of the football season, but before we know it, we will be having Buckeye basketball and football going on at the same time. The football team is in the middle, just got off of, not in the middle, just got off of their off week and is about to embark on a road trip to Bloomington, Indiana to face the Indiana Hoosiers. Before we know it, your Buckeye basketball team will be taking the court in the 2021-2022 season. It's very exciting to see and to think about what Chris Holtman has in this year's team on this year's team and how he will utilize the talent that has been there and how he will utilize the talent that is new to Columbus, Ohio. The AP poll, the preseason AP poll came out on Monday. And I was very inter interested, intrigued to see how Ohio State was viewed right now. At the end of the last season, they were number seven in the final AP poll. Ohio State lost Dwayne Washington Jr. to the NBA, have transfers coming in. We'll talk about them very, very shortly. So I was kind of interested to see you lose your leading score, you have new guys coming in. How do the people that vote in the AP poll view this year's basketball team. The Buckeyes come in. They finished last season at number seven in the AP poll. They come in the very first AP poll, number 17 in the country. Number 15, Houston. Number 16, Arkansas. 18, Tennessee. 19, North Carolina. 20, Florida State. Every team there has questions. Every team there has talent. Every team has the possibility, just like the top 10 teams that were going to go over here in a second to capitalize on that talent and to make a deep tournament run. 10 through 1 in this order. Here are the top 10 teams in the country. We're going to count down 10 through 1. Number 10, Kentucky. Number 9, Duke. Number 8, Baylor. Number 7, Purdue, a team that I do believe has one of the best rosters in the Big Ten Basketball Conference. Number 6, Michigan. Number 5, Texas. 4, Villanova. 3, Kansas. Number eight, UCLA, who, who got eight first place votes. And then Gonzaga, who was number one, got 55 first place votes. I am intrigued by this team. I'm curious about this basketball team. Because when you lose a guy who is your leading scorer, one thing is how are they going to overcome that? How, what are we going to learn from them early on when they're tested in their non-conference slate? Ohio State right now. We're looking at their preseason schedule. They have games against, they have a game against Xavier on November 18th. They have a game against Seton Hall on Monday, November the 22nd. They have a night game. Yeah, well, basketball, almost, almost every game's played at night. We have a game against the Duke Blue Devils on Tuesday. Now, the game is in Columbus. It is at home. That is November the 30th. That is a 9.30 p.m. tip-off time. So I hope everyone puts that down. They get enough sleep or they put the kids down early so they can pregame to get ready for that big-time matchup. They have a they have an away game against Penn State December the 5th. And that's going to be a tough test, interesting test, because you're going to be in the middle of non-conference play. Then you got to play a conference opponent. They play Townsend or Tosin, however you pronounce that, December the 8th. And then they play another 
Big Ten Conference team in Wisconsin on a Saturday, December 11th. They do have an, an, um, a game in Vegas against Kentucky that will be on Saturday, December 18th. I do believe that is the CBS Sports Classic that Ohio State normally plays in every single year. The non-conference slate, as Chris Holman has mentioned it, is going to be very, very tough. And with a 17 ranking early on in the AP poll, the preseason AP poll, those type of matchups early on are going to be what's going to really help this team and propel this team in a way that they could not be propelled or pushed last year during, during that non-conference slate. I remember last year, and I was looking forward to the North Carolina matchup in the CBS Sports Classic, and I believe there was one other power or big-time matchup that Ohio State had in the non-conference late during last season. I know that, that things got changed last minute in the CBS Sports Classic. I believe that Ohio State ended up playing, I want to say UCLA instead of North Carolina. That was going to be, I believe, in December, um, around that time period. There's interesting things about this non-conference late because last year, it really wasn't that tough. And so any movement early on in the AP poll wasn't something that was probably going to happen because they just really didn't get tested like they're going to this year. You've got Xavier. Chris Holtman has raged and talked about how Akron is a good basketball team. You've got Seton Hall. you got California or Florida Wednesday on Christmas Eve of this season. Um, or excuse me, not Christmas Eve. This is November 24th, not December 24th. So you got a lot of tough teams early going. And I do think... This preseason poll ranking is going to light a fire under these young men. It's going to push these young men. Yes, a preseason poll means nothing for what's going to happen in February or March, but it's a good barometer and a good way, to, good way for you to gauge how other people are viewing you, your basketball team, going into the 2021-2022 college basketball season. This is Locked on Buckeyes part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. I want to remind everybody about what's coming tonight. There will be Locked On Buckeyes live coming this evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch it right here on YouTube. Just search Locked On Buckeyes, or you can watch it on my personal Twitter page at jstevens07. For those of you that are watching via YouTube or watching via wkyc.com, you can see my Twitter handle right there on the graphic. This basketball team, I mentioned it earlier, but there are some intriguing things about the basketball team that we currently know. And I think a couple of them could be big pieces and very vital to how the basketball is played by Ohio State in November. Not looking ahead to January, February, early portions of March, or even into the NC2A tournament in November. In December, I think there's interesting things we can look at and say, we'll possibly see these things happen, or we won't see these things happen. I know Ohio State answered, not answered, they announced captains for the first time since 2008. And so there's intriguing things there, interesting things there about that dynamic. Justice suing Justin Arns, EJ Liddell, and Kyle Young. Will all four of them start? Will we see that Chris Holtman, which we'll talk about here in a second, utilizes a transfer in that off-guard spot for the basketball team? The leadership of this team, I think, will be very, very interesting and intriguing as we look at it. We look at the four guys that I just mentioned as captains, Arns, Liddell, Young, and Suing. Two of the four are transfers. One of them just went through the NBA pre-draft process. Another one in Kyle Young was on the fence about if he was going to come back to Columbus or go and live his life as a professional in something other than basketball because I didn't see him playing professional basketball, not in America or even overseas. Could have happened overseas, probably not in the U.S. of A. So when I look at the leadership of this basketball team, I think it's intriguing because this team has leadership, and that's one thing that I think when you have guys that are inexperienced on this team, on the roster that primarily will come off of the bench, you need some type of leadership. Guys that have been through the battle together, guys that have seen a lots of basketball, a guy in Justice Sewing that has seen some West Coast ball when it, previously before coming into Ohio State. So there are some 
things there that I think will be very, very vital and important to this team this year. The leadership of Liddell, Arns, Suing, and Young, especially Arns, who was primarily a bench player from last season, who did come in to start when C.J. Walker went down with an injury. I do think those things are very, very important because early on, when you have guys that haven't played very much, you need a guy either coming off, possibly coming off of your bench to keep those bench players engaged, involved, keep their head in the game, keep their mentals right. You need those things to happen. So I'm going to be very interested to see how Justin Orange is utilized by this team. There are a few new phases with this basketball team. You have Jamari Wheeler transfer in from Penn State. He was a point guard, a guy that Chris Holtman, Jamari Wheeler, they both believe Jamari Wheeler can possibly be the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. That's how good and lethal he could be in the backcourt, wreaking havoc and making, it, making things very, very hard for the lead ball handler for the opposition. I do think Jamari Wheeler brings an asset to this team that the team really didn't have last year. The team didn't have a shutdown, lockdown defender, um, point guard, shooting guard, either one that can defend the team's lead guard or point guard on the other team. Jamoy Wheeler right now, if he's able to go about this thing and do and play the basketball exactly how we believe he can and how he believes he can, this could be a very big piece to this year's Ohio State basketball team. You also have Cedric Russell, who is a transfer from Louisiana. He's an off guard or a two guard. If you're an old school guy like me, I go one guard, two guard, three, four, five, as far as my positions to describe what positions are on the court. Now we do know the new age basketball position list. You will see some of that with this year's basketball team. Cedric Russell is going to be interesting because when you go from a mid-major to a power, how is he going to be able to level up and play and adjust to the physicality that we're going to see in the Big Ten Conference? We see all around the Big Ten Football Conference physical play. We see all around that conference the situations where players, football players, might get a little injured, might get a little banged up because of the physical play that's on the football field. Well, the basketball season's no joke either. Now, not the physicality or level of pain that you might get from the numerous, numerous hits you might take during a football game, two different sports. However, you can look at the basketball in the Big Ten and say, if you're not ready to bang or battle, you're not going to be a guy that's going to be very, very good in this conference. Cedric Russell, very curious to see how he fits in with this team and will he start game number one to be that guard in the backcourt that could be a go to player? Curious. Very, very curious to see if that happens. You also have Joey Brunk, who is a guy that's been tied to Chris Holtman since Chris Holtman was at Butler. Joey Brunk was a top player in high school in the state of Indiana in Indianapolis. I believe he went to the Final Four one year. I know he went to the Final Four. I don't believe his team went to state when he was at Southport High School in the southern portion of Indianapolis, Indiana. While Chris Holtman was at Butler, Joey Brunk played at Butler, transferred to Indiana. Now he transferred a grad transfer to the Ohio State University. And with Zed Key's growth and him needing somebody on practice to bang with, it's not just a pad. I do think Joey Brunk is a big piece to this team as well. Six foot 11, 250 pounds. We will be looking at him early on to see how he adjusts to this Chris Holtman offense and how he adjusts to the play that we're going that we want to see. Does do we get does he play like we expect? Does he play like we want him to? Or is he falling short like some think he will? I'm very curious and intrigued by this little, by this addition of Joey Brunk. The Buckeyes are inexperienced. We're going to hit a lot of stuff right now. The Buckeyes are inexperienced in a certain way. Yes, they have leadership in Arn Suing, Liddell, and Young. Yes, they have a guy in Wheeler who is a grad transfer that can assist in the backcourt and be the lead guard and top defender on this team. Who's going to be that guy to score in the backcourt? Because outside of Cedric Russell, who's a mid-major transfer, you got Michi Johnson coming off the bench. You got Malachi Branham, who is a true freshman, who I believe will get some clock and some run this year. You got Justin Arns, who may be a little starter, may come off the bench, depending on who the opposition is. Seth Towns come, recovering from a back injury. So is Seth Towns going to be somebody that you will be able to look at and say, hey, yeah, this is it. 
Zed Key, Joey Brunk. I think the bench scoring, bench scoring is going to be very, very vital. Outside of the possibility of Malachi Branham, I'm curious how the scoring is going to come in the front court for this team. Is it going to be going to be primarily a back court thing with Michi Johnson, Malachi Branham, a one-two punch that the team will need? Will there be any in the front court? Will Zed be Zed Key be a guy that can, that can average eight to ten off the bench? Right now, I don't think so, but. Uh, my assumptions or my thoughts right now can be changed and altered by his play on the court. Very curious. I think this the starting lineup, we're going to close out with this. The starting lineup, I do think, will go Jamari Wheeler, Justin Arns early, Justice Sooning, EJ Liddell, Kyle Young. Now, the Arns and Russell thing is going to be interesting because Arns is listed on the website as a forward. However, I do think he will be the off guard early on until Cedric Russell gets acclimated and possibly seeing a switching of said Russell, said we're going to go with nicknames here, said Russell coming in at the at the off guard spot and then Arns coming in. I do not think that Malachi Branham will start this season. He may start due to injury. I don't think Jimmy Sotos will start. That's a possibility, but I don't think he'll start, especially early, because he's been recovering from an injury. Kalen Etzler, for those of you that know all about the newcomers, Kalen Etzler is a red shirt, is going to red shirt during this year's Ohio State Buckeye basketball season. The, bu the basketball season will be here before we know it. They have an ex exhibition game against the University of Indianapolis on Monday, November 9th, and the very first game of the season is going to be on Tuesday, November no. Monday, Monday, no November 1st is the exhibition. Tuesday, November 9th against Akron is the first game of the year for your Ohio State Buckeye basketball team. This is Locked on Buckeyes live. Not live. Just <laughs> live will be tonight. This is Locked on Buckeyes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day. Guys. It's nice when we think about the night games that Ohio State football will have. There will be a night game this coming weekend against the Indiana Hoosiers. And if you remember some of the preseason conversations that we had about the football team, and everybody wants to know, when will college game day come to Columbus? Will we see college game day be in Columbus for a football game anytime this season? And these are things that I like to do in the, in the offseason. I'm sure some of you like to do them in the offseason as well. You can get big news Saturday, that Fox pregame show coming in. You can get the BTN tailgate to come in as well. But I don't care who you are, if you're five years old or if you're 85 years old. To many people out there, the premier and the best, one of the best television shows, not just sport television shows, the best television shows in America every single year is ESPN College Game Day. There's a reason why it's three hours long. It's a reason why when you figure out and when they announce where they are going in a particular week, it's a big deal. It's also a big deal if you get Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit calling your game on that day. And it's a possibility that Ohio State could. Now, I don't know where they're calling, what game they're calling this weekend. It could be the ABC game, Ohio State in Indiana this coming weekend um, on Saturday, October the 23rd. I will be at that game Excited to see the Buckeyes for the very first time with my own eyes in the stadium while they are playing. But then also announced on Monday, Ohio State, their game on Saturday, October 30th, Halloween weekend, will be a night game on ABC. Now, when we figure that detail in, there's another big matchup that same day, a rivalry game, another one in the Big Ten that'll be on Fox at 12 noon. So, let's think about this intriguing detail. On October 30th, talking about the possibility of college game day coming to Columbus, Ohio for the Penn State game on October the 30th, other big-time matchups on that day, well, this one is not a big-time matchup, but it's a rivalry. You do have Iowa and Wisconsin playing at 12 noon Eastern on ESPN. I don't think that ESPN is going to Camp Randall Stadium in Wisconsin for that matchup. As I look through the schedule, I really don't see any other intriguing matchups. You do what well, you do. You have um, you have Georgia and Florida, um, the world's largest cocktail party. I know that's not the political. I know 
that may not be the political thing to call that rivalry anymore, but that's what I grew up on. And many people down there in the South still call that that rivalry. The world's largest cocktail party there in Jacksonville, Florida, Georgia and Florida. That's on CBS, a CBS game that day. And I keep on looking through. You got Ole Miss and Auburn at 7 p.m. Eastern that they could go to Auburn for that one. I just don't see any other games outside of you got Georgia, Florida. You got I just went through another one, Ole Miss and Auburn. You got Michigan State, Michigan. You got Penn State, Ohio State. You got four different four different times for you to go to, four different games for you to go to during that day. And I do personally believe there's a really good shot because game day loves Columbus, Ohio, and they love Ohio State because that means ratings and a big time atmosphere for them. I could easily see this being the time that college game day comes to Columbus. And I do think it's going to be the only time they come to Columbus this season. I don't think they will go to Columbus the third Saturday in November when Michigan State comes to town. I know Michigan State did not have the best outing this past weekend against the Indiana Hoosiers, but I do think there's a possibility that that could be another one. I don't think that when Ohio State goes to Nebraska that – Game day will go to Nebraska. Don't think so. I don't think they'll come to Columbus when Purdue, the Boilermakers, go to Ohio State to play the second, I think, believe it's the second weekend in November. So there's, this is one of the two possible times throughout the rest of the season that ESPN College game day could go to Columbus and make it make it make sense. Now, if they if they go when Purdue comes to town, it's simply just to fill it, – it wouldn't make sense. Like, it literally would not make sense for them to go during that game. So it's the Penn State week or Michigan State week, and we all know ESPN wants to get Ohio State on their – on their on their channel on their station to broadcast their game. If it weren't for Fox trying to t- trying to dominate that noon window and via the drafting that they go through to pick what network gets what game and what time slot that game is played in and the little minute de- or int- intricate details that go into the games being broadcasted where they are broadcast, I do think that Ohio State would have had more games on ABC or ESPN probably a couple more primetime games earlier in the year. I do think Fox could have if they did not want to dominate that 12 window and decided to compete with the 730 or 8 o'clock game on ABC or ESPN at that time. I do think that Fox could have moved that Oregon-Ohio State game in week two to prime time. That would have been a primary, a great time to make that happen. They still dominated that time slot, which is what they want to do, but compete. Imagine you put a pat. You imagine you put a, a top Big Twelve game, and then you end the night with the top Big Ten game. Trust me, you put Oklahoma at twelve and Ohio State at seven thirty. Very, very inter- inter- Very, very interesting to see how that one works out. Now, with the MLB playoffs coming in to play right now, I know for a fact that if Fox wanted to move that game tonight, it'd be very, very hard because Fox does Fox does broadcast. The, NL, the Major League Baseball playoffs and the World Series. So that could be why ABC got this game, a night game. It's already going to be in the shoe. They already have the, the Scarlet, all Scarlet jerseys that they're going to be wearing. It kind of has the billing and the makeup of a night game. And so since Fox probably can't move that game tonight, ABC, it's all you right now. I do think there's a possibility, a really good possibility for – College game day, to, college game day to be at not only one. I'm guessing not only one game this season, the rest of the season, but two games that Ohio State will be playing in. One, Ohio State, Penn State. I do think for sure, for certain. I don't see them. It's possible, really possible, for them to go to Michigan or Michigan State. But that game is on Fox. They could still go there and then go to the game in Columbus. Just hop on a plane. Not that far. To, not that hard to get from East Lansing to Columbus. Not a far flight at all. And then you have the Georgia, Florida, and Ole Miss, and Auburn. I do see this being the game in the day that game day is at Columbus, but also the game against the team up north. The Saturday after Thanksgiving, I do think that's another time college game day will be at at a game that Ohio State is playing in during this 2021 college football season. Guys, This has been fun, and thank you, thank you, thank you for making this podcast the very first listen of your day. You can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. Send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Live show tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be in your spot because we will have a lot 
to talk about. Basketball today, we will be talking about the football games coming up throughout the rest of of the week. In the meantime, make sure you check out the Locked on Big Ten podcast with its host, Mr. Nate Dickinson. Not only because I will be there every single Monday week recapping the weekend that was in the Big Ten football conference, but also because it is your place to stay up to date with everything going on in the Big Ten football conference. Follow, subscribe to the Locked on Big Ten podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your Fine podcast.